Welcome to March Madness Minute number 10. We are up to double digits. Today we're going to look at Google Docs and some of the more advanced features. So to start with, we're going to look at page formatting. And if I go to File, Page Setup, I can change the color of my paper. And I would not do that if you're doing, uh, if you're going to be printing this out. But if you're working on going paperless and sharing this electronically, then uh, add some color to your life. Uh, so I can add page color, I can change portrait, landscape, paper size, and margins all in that area. And that was under file. Something else somebody asked about was the ruler. So that if you do want to change indentations and hanging indents, you can do that here. And that's just going to be under view, show ruler. Uh, special characters. If you're somebody that teaches math, science, a foreign language, um, this is a really good one to know. If you go to insert special characters, you can draw out symbols with your mouse. And I can draw that out here and it's going to guess what I want. So if I put the NEA, the NEA was then inserted into my document. Um, but this also, like I mentioned, is great for science, math. I can draw symbols here and now I've added the division symbol. Um, chat. So if I look up at the top here, I'm going to see little squares of somebody else's in my document and it's going to show their name if they're logged in and it is not going to show their name. It's just going to have an anonymous animal if they are not logged in. Um, if I see somebody here, I can click on this chat button and I can say, hey, how the heck are you? And they can respond. And so you can have a chat back and forth. This works great if students are working on a collaborative document or if you're working on a document with somebody, you can um, break up work this way. You can ask it before you make a major change. So it's just another layer of collaboration. Table of contents. So I have this document here that's eight pages long about um, WordPress facts. And I've already gone through to help with hierarchy. So for example, if I click on my title, it says title here. And I've gone through and broken up my major headings as a heading one, and then parts of that heading two, and then so I've gone through and already done that. And I just did that by highlighting my text and choosing from this drop down um, to choose the hierarchy. And it also changes some of the text features. But if I go here to insert table of contents, there it's gone through my entire document and pulled all of my headings. So I see basics 101 and it has all of my topics about basics. And if I make any changes, I just need to hit this refresh button. But the nice part about this is this is interactive. So if I go through uh, one question we get a lot about WordPress is comments. So if I click on the word comments, here's a link and I click on the link. It's going to take me to that section. So it took me to page three of the eight pages and it tells me how to turn comments off so I don't get all those annoying emails about spam on my WordPress site. And we're going to jump back over to March Madness. So that was table of contents published to the web. So if you're interested in having a Google document go uh, be visible on your web page, what the nice thing about that is you don't need to go back to WordPress to make changes. You'd make changes in Google and then they'll be refreshed onto your WordPress page. So if I go to file and publish to the web, I could get a link and so somebody could click on my link to see my document. But if I actually want the document to show up on the page, I'm going to click on this embed publish and OK. So when you see something that starts with iframe, this is an embed code. And you'll see this if you go to YouTube. So I can copy this embed code and I'm going to go to WordPress. So I'm adding a new page called March Madness Minute number 10. And when you add a page or a post, visual allows you to make things pretty. You can make things bold and different fonts and um, different colors. But if I click on HTML, I don't need to know everything about this code, but I do know if I paste it here and publish and preview, my document is going to be embedded. So you'll see it, it doesn't look great yet, um, but my document is actually showing up here. It's not a link to it. It's actually showing up. And anytime I make changes on that document, those will be reflected here. If I go back to my document, I'm sorry, back to my WordPress, there are things I can do. And I put those here. So I can add these words and I can mess around with them a little bit, depending on your uh, 
let's see here, depending on the theme that you used, you might have a different width to work with. So here I can say, so if I wanted the width to be the size of a piece of paper, so that's eight and a half inches, that would be 850 pixels. And height would be then 1100 pixels. And I can update it and preview it. And now you can see it's larger. And for this theme, that's too big, it's going across, but I can go back and play with those numbers and uh, narrow it down so that it fits well. And anytime I make a change here, it might take a few minutes, but it'll be reflected on my blog. Um, so if you have a page that you maybe put your homework for the week, you can change that in Google and you're not having to log into WordPress all the time. And so that was our to-do list for our more advanced features in Google Docs. Thanks and have a great weekend.